The Bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western theater. Recorded earlier for release at this time. Drifting along, singing a song under a western moon. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western theater, starring America's great Western singers, Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage, bringing you the music, the stories, and the spirit of the great open spaces. And now, here are the Riders of the Purple Sage. Hear my song as I ride along, I'm just a happy roving cowboy. Herding the dark clouds out of the sky, keeping the heavens blue. Nowhere to go and nothing to do, I'm just a happy roving cowboy. Let me ride that long trail down to the end, where the skies are always blue. Hear my song as I ride along, I'm just a happy roving cowboy. Hurting the dark clouds out of the sky, keeping the heavens blue. I ain't got a dime to spend in my time, I'm just a happy roving cowboy. Let me sing my song till they call me home to the land beyond the blue. Hear my song as I ride along, I'm just a happy roving cowboy. Herding the dark clouds out of the sky, keeping the heavens blue. Thank you, friends. It's good to be back again with you this week. Right now, the boys and I would like to sing for you an old love ballad, which has recently reached new heights of popularity. We know you'll like, I wonder who's kissing her now. tells him of me I wonder who's kissing her now We hear a lot about the romantic cowboys of the Old West, but little is said about the cowgirls who lived on the great cattle ranges. Yes, sir, the women had a lot to do with the winning of the West. While the men were installing law and order on the great frontiers, their women folk were making homes out of rough shacks and ranch buildings. Those women knew the value of good food for their men folks, just like the women of today do. And while the pioneer women had to bake bread two or three times a week, the modern woman is more fortunate. For her and her hungry men folks, there's Weber's Bread at her convenient neighborhood grocers, fresh baked every day. And what good bread it is, soft, fresh, and tasty. Just what you want bread to be. Buy a loaf of Weber's Bread tomorrow in the blue and white gingham wrapper. You'll like it. And 
Meanwhile, the writers of the Purple Sage are ready to bring you their special rendition of a true Western classic, San Antonio Rose. Deep within my heart lies a melody, a song of old San Antonio. Where in dreams I live with a memory beneath the stars all alone. It was there I found beside the Alamo enchantment strange as the blue up above. Moonlit past that only she would know still hears my broken song of love. Moon in all your splendor, no only my heart. Call back my rose, rose of sand and tone. Lips so sweet and tender like petals falling apart. Speak once again of my love, my own overbroken song, empty words I know, still live in my heart all alone. For oh, that moonlit pass by the Alamo, and rose, my rose of San Antonio. <laughs> All your splendor, no, only my heart. Call back my rose, rose of sand and tone. Lips so sweet and tender, like petals falling apart. Speak once again of my love, my own overbroken song. Empty words I know still live in my heart all alone. All that moonlit pass by the Alamo and rose, my rose of sand and tone, rose of sand and tone. Boy, you have a look in your eye that tells me you and the boys have something special for the folks. Well, you're right, Terry. It's a favorite song of ours because its sentiments are truly Western. We'd like to sing Adobe Hacienda. In my Adobe Hacienda There's a touch of Mexico Cactus lovelier than orchids Blooming in the patio Soft desert stars And the strum of guitars Makes every evening seem so sweet In my adobe hacienda Life and love are more complete now for another western story told by Foy Willing and the riders of the Purple Sage. The title of today's adventure, One Man's Poison. If there's one place in the world where absolutely anything can happen, it's the West. There in that land of vast plains and rugged mountains, men experience everything that life has to offer. Man may not have a peso in his jeans one day, strike it rich the next, lose his pile in a poker game that night, and be broke again on the third. The riders of the Purple Sage have had their share of adventures and experiences in the West, many dangerous, many dramatic. And yes, some that were amusing, such as the one we're to hear about now. 
The boys were in a festive, light-hearted mood that sunny spring morning as they rode into the little western town of Boca Grande to take part in the town's Pioneer Week celebration. Yes, sir, and then I'm going to get me a silver belt buckle studded with rubies and a shirt with checks on it about the size of Mrs. Flanagan's griddle cakes. And then after that, I'm going to go... Hey, for... now, wait a minute there. Just pull up your check, Rain Boy. Those plans of yours are going to take some high financing. Where are you going to get the money from? Oh, didn't I tell you? Well, I'm going to win the calf rope and event at the rodeo when we get into Boca Grande. Well, there's going to be a lot of top hands trying for that prize money, Al. What makes you so sure you're going to win? Oh, doggone you, boy. I'll bet your idea of a pleasant afternoon would be to go to the circus and stick pins in all the kids' toy balloons. Okay, Al, I was just kidding you. You'll win by a mile. Hey, Johnny, what are you so quiet about? Nothing, boy. I was just thinking. You mean you were just mooning about that little gal that waits on tables at Mrs. Flanagan's boarding house, that's what you mean. No, Al, I wasn't doing anything of the kind. Well, I wouldn't blame you if you was, Johnny. Gladys is a mighty sweet little girl. She sure is. Gosh, I hope she still works at Mrs. Flanagan's. Well, boy, if we dawdle along the road like this, you'll be all day finding out. Come on, fellas, let's get moving. Get up there. Where's the saints for service if it ain't for you, Nan and Johnny? Come in, boys. Hello, Miss Flanagan. It's good to see you. Hi there, Mrs. Flanagan, and sure and how's the fatter's Colleen this side of the Emerald Isle? I'll ah, go along with you. You and your blarney now. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Flanagan, I was wondering if... Well, that is, if Gladys still worked here. Oh, worry you now. Well, Johnny lad, you can stop your wondering. Of course, that she does. And if you'd care to step back to the kitchen, I wouldn't wonder but what you might give her a bit of a surprise. Gee, thanks, Mrs. Flanagan. I'll see you later, fellas. Okay, Johnny. Well, Miss Flanagan, have you got a room for us? That I have, boy. The same one you had when you were here for Pioneer Week last year. Just up this way. Here you are, boys. Say, this is swell, Miss Flanagan. Man, look at that feather bed. I'm sure going to sleep soft in that tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, here's your towels in the washstand. Now, dinner's at 12 shop, and you'd better be on time if you want to get anything. Don't worry, Miss Flanagan. We know those capo boarders of yours. When they get through riding herd on a platter of hash, there ain't enough left to feed a flea with a puny appetite. <laughs> Not sure <laughs> the truth of it. Well, see you at dinner, boys. <laughs> Hello, Gladys. What? Johnny. Johnny Paul. Gee, if this ain't a surprise. Gee, Gladys, you sure are looking <clears throat> healthy. Oh, you cowboys, you're all alike. Trying to turn a girl's head with flattery. Oh, go on. <laughs> Gee, Johnny. How you been, anyway? Fine, Gladys. How about yourself? Still like the West? Oh, sure. You know, there's something about the West that gets you. It's so kind of Western. Yeah, it sure is. Don't you miss New York, though? Oh, sure. I, I kind of miss the cultural type things, like the Museum of Modern Art and Grant's Tomb. Yeah. Gladys, you ever been to see them places? No, but it's kind of nice having them there handy in case I should ever want to go. Say, Gladys, I hear they're having a big dance in town tonight. Yeah, o only they call it some Mexican weight. I think it's a fiasco. Oh, you mean fiesta, Gladys. Oh. It's Spanish for a big celebration. Oh, gee, this is going to be a big affair, all right. It's on account of the Pioneer Week they're having it. Say, Gladys, uh, would you, well, that is, could I, uh, take you to the dance? Gee, Johnny, I'd love to go. Well. Oh, gosh. I, I, I got the cutest new hat to wear. It's a picture hat with a bunch of grapes, the bouquet of flowers, the bird of paradise on it. Golly, it sounds pretty. Yeah. Well, I... Oh, it says when you go to buy a hat, you can't go wrong if you get something plain. Uh, look, Johnny, I got to set the table for dinner, but I'll see you when I get my work finished up. Okay? Sure. I got to go get cleaned up for dinner myself. Gee, Gladys, I'm glad you're going to the dance with me. Oh, I am too. Gee, Johnny, you remember the last time we had a date? We strolled out in the moonlight, and, and you looked in my eyes and stroked my hair. Gosh, your hands were the soft as velvet. Yeah, I know. I forgot to take my mittens off. Well, Mrs. Flanagan, your skillet hand sure hasn't lost any of its cunning. 
That's the best chow I've had since we was here last year. Sure is, Mrs. Flanagan. It sure is. <laughs> well, boys, it does me good to see you eat. Al, how about one more piece of apple pie now? Oh, no, my thank you. Seven's my lucky number, and I'm going to stop on that. <laughs> all right, all right. And how about you, Johnny? Sure, you don't seem to be eating too hearty. No, thanks. I'm full up. Uh, Johnny's appetite ain't normal on account of the love bug bit him. Al, you cut that out. All right, Johnny. <laughs> take it easy. Al was only teasing you. Well... Uh, Ms. Flanagan, what's the latest news around here? Still have the same old crop of boarders? Oh, they come and they go, boy. And speaking frankly, I've got one that I wish would go. Why? What's wrong with him? Don't he pay his bill? It ain't a him, it's a her. And she pays her bill all right, but uh, she sure's a lot more trouble than she's worse. Well, who is she, Mrs. Flanagan? Oh, she's a widow lady from Ohio, I think. Name of Dinwiddie. Rich as a miser and twice as mean. Sounds like a real headache, Miss Flanagan. Oh, she is that, boy. She's one of them, uh... What do you call them? Uh, uh, hypodermics. Oh, you mean uh, hypochondriac, don't you? A what? A uh, hypochondriac, Al. That means a person who's always got the idea he's sick. That's it, Foy. Mrs. Dinwiddie is healthy as a buck and bronco. But to hear her tell it, why, you'd think she was just one jump ahead of the undertaker. Why, only the other day she was asked to tell me... Oh, oh Mrs. Flanagan, oh, I'm so upset. I've lost my pills. Uh, which pills, Mrs. Dinwiddie? Red, blue, or yellow? Uh, the green. Oh, whatever could have happened. Now, no, calm me. yourself, Mrs. Dinwiddie. I know oh. where your pills are. Oh? Sure, I was keen in your room, and I didn't want the bottle to get knocked over. So, I put it on top of your portable iron lung. Oh, mm. well, that certainly is a... Re- oh, why, Mrs. Flanagan. Well, I do beg your pardon. I didn't know you had company. <laughs> well, now, that's all right, Mrs. Dinwiddie. <laughs> this is Mr. Foy Willing. Well, how do you do? Howdy, ma'am. Uh, this is Mr. Al Sloy. Oh, Mr. Sloy. Uh, well, this is a pleasure. Likewise, ma'am. Uh, well, now, tell me, who is this great, big, handsome, bashful chap in the background? Sure, that's Johnny Paul, Mrs. Dinwiddie. Hello. Oh, Mrs. Flanagan, isn't he just the best-looking thing you ever saw? Oh, now, ma'am. Oh, you know, Mr. Paul, you remind me of someone I know very well. Now, let me see. Who is it? Oh, of course, Dr. Kildare. You aren't by any chance a doctor, are you? No, ma'am. But I did give some medicine to an old mule once that had the heaves. Oh! Oh, what a delightful sense of humor. You and I simply must get to know each other better. You can... uh... Call me Flora. Well, that's right. Nice of you, ma'am. You can call me Mr. Paul. Now, if you'll excuse me... Oh, you mustn't think of leaving. We've got so many things to talk about. I want to find out all about you. When you had your tonsils out. What hospitals you've been in. I don't think you'll get much satisfaction out of talking to Johnny, ma'am. As far as I know, he was never sick a day in his life. Well, how wonderful. Then all my experience will be new to you, Mr. Paul. You know, I'm just crazy about doctors and hospitals. That's I'm very new. interesting, ma'am, but I just got to... Well, in fact, I married my doctor. Gee, ma'am, your conversation is sure interesting, but I really do have to be getting along. Oh, no, you don't. Now, I'm going to take you right in the parlor and show you my photograph album. But, ma'am, I promised Gladys... Now, come I... right along. Oh, you just love this. I've got the most wonderful collection of pictures you ever saw. Snapshots, Miss Dinwiddie? Oh, dear, no. X-ray. Hey, Foy, Foy, let me in, quick Oh, hello, Johnny Come on in Quick, Foy, get out of the way Let me get this door locked Hey, what's wrong with you, Johnny? You look scared as a horse thief With a posse after him It's that woman, fellas That Mrs. Dinwiddie You gotta get her away from here You just gotta What's the matter, Johnny? She a little too much for you? Oh, brother, she's had me in there for two hours talking about her operations. I wouldn't have got away yet, but she went upstairs to give herself a shot for sinus trouble, and I made a dash for it. Well, don't worry, Johnny. You can stay here in the room till it's time for you and Gladys to go to the dance tonight. Oh, that's another thing, Foy. That's the worst of all. Mrs. Dinwiddie made me promise to take her to the dance tonight. Oh, no, you poor sucker. Oh, Johnny, how'd you ever get yourself in such a mess? Why didn't you tell her you already had a date? Oh, you don't know that woman, Foy. Ain't no refusing her once she gets a mindset on a thing. That's bad. It's terrible. If I take Mrs. Dinwiddie to the dance, Gladys will never forgive me. Well, Johnny, it looks like you'll just have to lock yourself up here and let Foy and me tell Mrs. Dinwiddie and Gladys you're sick or something. Yeah, I reckon so. Say, wait a minute. Let me think. Yeah, I believe it'll work. Boys, I got an idea. What do you mean, Foy? Look, fellas, you know how mortal afraid Mrs. Dinwiddie is of getting sick. Yeah. Now, now, just suppose Johnny here had some real contagious disease. She wouldn't go near him. But, Foy, I ain't got no disease. You said yourself that I've never been sick a day in my life. I know, I know, Johnny, but we're going to make it look like you're sick. 
Now, first of all, we got to ride outside of town into the hills and get some tangleberry weed. Well, what in tarnation is that? Well, it's a weed that'll irritate your skin and make it look like you got a rash when you rub it on you. It won't hurt you none, and it goes away in a few minutes. But it sure looks awful at first. Well, well then what do we do? We rub some of it on Johnny's face and around under his eyes. Then we have him drink a glass of vinegar. What? That's right, vinegar. It'll raise your temperature for a short time and make your face flush. Now, when you get to looking real sick, you'll go show yourself to Mrs. Dinwiddie. And unless I miss my guess, you won't have no more trouble with her. Oh, you're a genius. Come on, boys. Let's head for the hills and scare up some of that tangleberry weed. We've got to build ourselves an invalid. Here's Al with the vinegar, Johnny. Here you are, boy. I got it from Mrs. Flanagan. Swell. Did you tell her what we're going to do? Yeah, I didn't want her to get her scared when she saw Johnny. And she said she sure hoped it works and that if Mrs. Dinwiddie gets scared enough to pack up and move, she'll cancel our board bill. Good. Come on, Johnny, drink this down. Okay, give it to me. <coughs> That's the sourest stuff I ever put in my mouth. Well, what were you expecting it to taste like? A marshmallow milkshake or something? Come on, boy, let's rub that tangleberry weed all over his face. Okay, hold still, Johnny. Now, how does it feel? Not too bad. It burns a little. Holy smoke, boy, that stuff sure works fast. Look, his eyes are beginning to puff up already. Yeah, and the vinegar's beginning to make his face flush, too. Now, look, Johnny, when you show yourself to Miss Dinwiddie, tell her you've got a bad case of cerebral trichinosis. What the heck's that? It ain't anything. I just made it up. But it sounds bad, and I figure, along with a good look at that swollen face of yours, it'll scare the wits out of Mrs. Dinwiddie. Cerebral trichinosis. Cerebral trichinosis. Doggone, I hope I don't forget that. Oh, here's Mrs. Dinwiddie's room. Mrs. Dinwiddie! Oh, Mrs. Dinwiddie! Yes? Who is it? It's me, ma'am, Johnny. I come to take you to the dance. Oh, you dear boy. Well, I've all ready. I should have been... Oh! Why, ma'am, what's wrong? Your face! Look at it. It's all red and swollen. Oh, stand back. Keep away from me. Now, ma'am, don't get excited. It ain't nothing but a bad case of cerebral trichinosis. Highly contagious. Oh, oh, this is awful. Mrs. Flanagan. Mrs. Flanagan! Thanks for service. What's wrong now? Oh. What's the matter, Miss Denway? Oh, it's this, this, this awful creature. Look at him. He, he's got some horrible disease. Say, he does look mighty sick at that. Mm. Looks like he's got he's got the cerebral trichinosis or something around. That, that's just what it is. Mrs. Flanagan, you must quarantine this house at once. Oh, indeed, I must, Mrs. Dinwiddie. This very minute. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, what are you going to do now? What am I going yeah. to do? I'm going to pack my bags and catch the first train back to the Mayo Brothers Clinic. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, I've got to hand it to you. Your plan sure worked. Mrs. Dinwiddie was packed up and out of the house before you could say his cerebral trichinosis. She sure was, Al. Well, Johnny's face should be normal by now, and he'll probably be showing up here at the dance any minute with Gladys. Uh, hey, look. Coming in the door. Where? Oh, why, yes, it's Gladys. But Johnny isn't with her. That's funny. Yeah. Look, she sees us. She's coming over here. Hi, Gladys. Where's Johnny? Oh, that dumb chick. That, that... Oh! Hey, simmer down there, gal. What's wrong? Oh, I'm so mad I could spit rivets. I get one day a year with the big girl and he has to go and get sick. Oh, Gladys, you've got it all wrong. Johnny ain't really sick. Why, we just cooked that up to get rid of Mrs. Denwood. I know, I know. Johnny told me all about it. Cerebral trichinosis yet. But, Gladys, I don't get it. I know you don't, but Johnny did. When he went out in the hills to get that tangleberry weed today, he picked up the worst case of poison ivy I ever saw in my life. <laughs> the Old West was full of excitement. The men and their women folks who ran the great cattle ranches expected trouble at all hours of the day or night. Wild livestock, cattle rustling, Indians, and other desperados kept their lives keyed to meeting emergencies. But frontier life had its monotony, its routine, too. And the smart ranch wife knew how good food could pep a man up when his spirit grew dull. Just like the smart housewife today uses Weber's bread at her table because she knows that Weber's bread is that backbone of every meal. It's always tasty, always fresh and soft, and so good it makes other foods taste better too. 
Buy a loaf of Weber's bread tomorrow in the blue and white gingham wrapper. See how much Weber's bread can add to the enjoyment of a meal. It's time once again for our featured song of the week. The riders of the Purple Sage have chosen to sing for you Trail to Mexico. Made up my mind in the early morn to leave my home where I was born to leave my native home a while and travel where. Time of the year You came to me And said, my dear Don't leave your home Oh, please don't go Don't ride the trail Into Mexico Oh, take your Take the girl to all proof true. I'm going down to the Rio Grande and ride the trail with a cowboy band. I'm on the trail into Mexico. Where the bullets fly, I'm bound to go. I'll leave my native home a while and travel west for many a Thank you, friends. Before we go, we'd like to thank Martha Wentworth, Gloria Blondell, and Lois Carbett for their good work in helping us tell our story. This is Foy Willing speaking for all of the writers of the Purple Sage, saying so long, and good luck to all of you. Drifting along, singing a song under From Hollywood, you've heard your all-star Western theater, a V.M. Bear production starring Foy Willing and the riders of the Purple Sage. The script was by Tom Adair, direction by Scott Farnworth. This is Terry O'Sullivan speaking. The all-star Western theater was recorded earlier and came to you from Columbia Square. This is KNX in Los Angeles.